Welcome everyone to today's workbook discussion on Zoom. Welcome also to all who join us later by watching or listening to this recording. I'm Laura Fenimore, the Chief Development Officer and Volunteer Coordinator with the Foundation for Inner Peace, the scribe authorized publisher of A Course in Miracles. We really appreciate your partnership with the Foundation. And if you wanna learn more about the Foundation or A Course in Miracles, please visit ACIM.org. If you feel inspired to make a love offering, please visit ACIM.org and at the top of the page, you will find the word donate. All donations support the work of the foundation. Each session will be delving into a discussion of the workbook lessons in A Course in Miracles led by a moderator team of volunteers that work with the foundation. What does discussion mean? In our gatherings here, we welcome the Holy Spirit to join us. Through this presence, our meeting becomes a joining of equals to commune with the Holy Spirit's guidance to experience miracles together. Some of the moderators here also support our social media channels. And if you'd like a list of FIP resources, please email support at ACIM.org and we'll be happy to share the resource list with you. Now let's begin our discussion. Welcome everyone to today's discussion of the workbook lessons in the Course in Miracles. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for being here now real time or for being with us when you watch and listen to the recording. We acknowledge your contribution to this gathering both in real time and at a later time in the form of both participating in the exchanges and in the form of holding space for the exchanges among brothers. Today, we will start where we left off last week, which is lesson 92, paragraph two. But before we do that, we will have a quick look at our meeting's guidelines, followed by a few minutes of silence in which we can center our minds. Go ahead, Maggie. Guidelines, I will read. The Foundation for Inner Peace, the scribe authorized publisher of A Course in Miracles, invites you to join our online discussions hosted here on Zoom and together, we intend to create a supportive learning environment. The moderator team welcomes different voices into these volunteer-led discussions on the workbook lessons in A Course in Miracles. We would like to share our meeting guidelines that were created to make sure that everyone feels safe and welcome in this group. To foster a safe and positive space, we kindly ask all participants to Embrace kindness and respect. To focus on the course. To share openly and respectfully. Welcome the Holy Spirit. As we engage in discussions, we invite the Holy Spirit's guidance to transform our interactions into holy relationships. This allows us to see the Christ within each other, fostering a sense of unity and love. This session will be recorded. By staying on the call, you give your permission to the Foundation for Inner Peace to post the recording on Facebook, YouTube, and on other social media of its choosing. If you do not want to be recorded, but you would like to stay on the call, just switch off your camera and you will not be visible. Together, let's embark on our journey uh, discussing the workbook lessons. I don't know what, I don't know it by heart, but that's sort of what it said, right? Okay, so now the time has come um, to center and quiet and quieten our minds. Settle comfortably in your chair and close your eyes if you like. Gently breathe in and out at your own pace. Direct your attention away from your body toward your mind. Let us quiet our minds.
imagine that your mind, your inner space, is like the sky, a vast, empty, sunlit blue sky. Thoughts that may appear in this vast blue sky are like puffs of cloud. Let any thought that may appear now in your inner space pass by. Do not cling to it. Instead, focus on the clear, empty, receptive space beyond that insignificant puff of cloud. On that receptive space that is your mind, that is our shared mind. This receptive inner space, this place of inner peace, this is where we are connected with our source and with each other. This is where the Holy Spirit speaks to us. Rest in that peaceful place a while. Let us close this centering moment with a few lines from Lesson 345. I invite you to receive Jesus' words into your heart as you listen. Peace to all seeking hearts today. The light has come to offer miracles to bless the tired world. It will find rest today for we will offer what we have received. Amen. Now gently come back to our shared space here on the internet and smile at your fellow travelers on the journey without distance to a goal that has never changed. Let's turn to lesson 92. And Maggie will share lesson 92. Okay, I've asked two people to read. Please go ahead, Jeanette. Start with the title, please. Miracles are seen in light, and light and strength are one. The idea for today is an extension of the previous one. You do not think of light in terms of strength and darkness in terms of weakness. That is because your idea of what seeing means is tied up with the body and its eyes and brain. Thus, you believe that you can change what you see by putting little bits of glass before your eyes. This is among the many magical beliefs that come from the conviction you are a body and the body's eyes can see. You also believe the body's brain can think. If you but understood the nature of thought, you could but laugh at this insane idea. It is as if you thought you held the match that lights the sun and gives it all its warmth, or that you held the world within your hand, securely bound until you let it go. Yet this is no more foolish than to believe the body's eyes can see and the brain can think. It is God's strength in you that is the light in which you see, as it is his mind with which you think. His strength denies your weakness. It is your weakness that sees through the body's eyes, peering about in darkness to behold the likeness of itself, the small, the weak, the sickly, and the dying, those in need, the helpless and afraid, the sad, the poor, the starving, and the joyless. These are seen through eyes that cannot see and cannot bless. 
Strength overlooks these things by seeing past appearances. It keeps its steady gaze upon the light that lies beyond them. It unites with light of which it is a part. It sees itself. It brings the light in which yourself appears. In darkness, you perceive a self that is not there. Strength is the truth about you. Weakness is an idol falsely worshiped and adored that strength may be dispelled and darkness rule where God appointed that there should be light. Strength comes from truth and shines with light its source has given it. Weakness reflects the darkness of its maker. It is sick and looks on sickness, which is like itself. Truth is a savior and can only will for happiness and peace for everyone. It gives its strength to everyone who asks in limitless supply. It sees that lack in anyone would be a lack in all. And so it gives its light that all may see and benefit as one. Its strength is shared that it may bring to all the miracle in which they will unite in purpose and forgiveness and in love. Weakness, which looks in darkness, cannot see a purpose in forgiveness and in love. It sees all others different from itself and nothing in the world that it would share. It judges and condemns, but does not love. In darkness, it remains to hide itself and dreams that it is strong and conquering, a victor over limitations that but grow in darkness to enormous size. It fears and it attacks and hates itself. And darkness, darkness covers everything it sees, leaving its dreams as fearful as itself. No miracles are here, only hate. It separates itself from what it sees while light and strength perceive themselves as one. The light of strength is not the light you see. It does not change and flicker and go out. It does not shift from night to day and back to darkness till the morning comes again. The light of strength is constant, sure as love, forever glad to give itself away because it cannot but be itself, because it cannot give but to itself. No one can ask in vain to share its sight and no one who enters its abode can leave without a miracle before his eyes and strength and light abiding in his heart. The strength in you will offer you the light and guide your seeing so you do not dwell on idle sh shadows that the body's eyes provide for self-deception. Strength and light unite you, and where they meet, yourself stands ready to embrace you as its own. Such is the meeting place we try today to find and rest in, for the peace of God is where yourself, his son, is waiting now to meet itself again and be as one. Let us give 20 minutes twice today to join this meeting. Let yourself be brought unto yourself. Its strength will be the light in which the gift of sight is given you. Leave then the dark a little while today, and we will practice seeing in the light, closing the body's eyes, and asking truth to show us how to find the meeting place of self and self, where light and strength are one. Morning and evening, we will practice thus. After the morning meeting, we will use the day in preparation for the time at night when we will meet again and trust. Let us repeat as often as we can the idea for today and recognize that we are being introduced to sight and led away from darkness to the light where only miracles can be perceived. Thank you both for that lovely reading. 
let's go back to the top. Last week, we looked at paragraph one and we talked about it extensively. And we talked about how, how real the body seems to us and that we know that the body isn't real, but that's not yet our experience. So we, we talked about what is our experience and how do we get from that experience to what the course is promising we will get to, namely that we know that the body is not real. Um, let's have a look at paragraph two. I'll read it um, for now and then we can talk about it. You also believe the body's brain can think. If you but understood the nature of thought, you could but laugh at this insane idea, the insane idea that um, the body's brain can think. It is as if you thought you held a match that lights the sun and gives it all its warmth, or that you held the world within your hand, securely bound until you let it go. Yet this is no more foolish than to believe the body's eyes can see, the brain can think. So that gives us something to talk about. I see one hand already. Andrew, go ahead. Thank you. Yes, I would like to talk about the nature of thought a little bit. Uh, it, it can truly be said that all is thought. Uh, we as extensions of God, as spirit, can create by thought the way God creates. And, and our creations are extensions of life. They're more spirit and they're eternal. Now, the, the, the mind that thinks it could be separate, the mind that thinks it's something other than everything, thinks also, but uh, its thoughts are made concrete through its own insanity. And uh, everything that seems to be made of matter, the body, the brain, the, the chair we're sitting on, the table, the room, everything is that seems solid and material and, and real is really only thought. All is thought. I wanted to stress that. Uh, and that's pretty much all I had to say on that subject. Thank you, Andrew. That was well pointed out. Um, the way I sometimes think about thought is that the thought that the separated mind thinks it thinks, those are regurgitations. They just rehash old news, whereas the thoughts that come from God are in inspirations. And so I like to keep keep it in my mind like that. Inspirations versus regurgitations. That helps. But I just thought I'd share that. But thank you, Andrew. Uh, Mia, your turn. Every so often the, um, in the course, there's like these really cheeky paragraphs, and this is one of them. And um, where it's like, you know, you think you light a match and that's the sun type of thing, the way it's it's written. It's it's almost to, to say that it's, you know, it is laughable. Um, and the idea that um, this is my experience, I guess, whatever, when I say the word my, is that the ego is kind of like, a, if it was to be considered the darkness, um or even the, um to relate it to the emotions um and lightness being the peace and the voice of holy spirit or god when the stillness when we're still and i'll just give an example i know this is a story but it explains something that I have been experiencing ever since I was a child and I finally got it this week. Whenever I'm alone in a room full of people and that gap happens when I'm about to create art, it's a gap where I stop paying attention to the world and I stop paying attention to everything. And I'm just in the moment of that creation about to begin this overwhelming sadness comes over me. And this was the first time that I realized this is not my sadness. Where is this coming from? And I said, this is the sadness 
that is experienced by the belief in the separation. And that's why when I'm in the gap, I can feel it fully. It is not my grief. It is the grief of the ego. And because I'm just tapped out in that one second of being able to jump in through the communication lines, that that I experience it. And I was like, oh, that has not ever been me. And so I equate that to where the weak, the weakness in this, what is talking about, um, without weaknesses by identifying with the darkness. And that if going into that sadness and, and, and feeling it and it, it's, it's, it's not the truth. It's not the truth. I don't have to go there. I can just recognize that it's there, recognize it is not me, recognize it exists. And interestingly enough, the minute I did that, it was like, goodbye. Thank you for coming. And we are free. And that's where the light comes in. That's where the strength comes in. Um, and so that's my experience of this and understanding that if if something is happening, not to identify it and attach it to yourself and the story um, and the course starts to explain the unraveling of this and that's the miracle of, of this. So that's how I see the light now I came to see the light this week thank yeah. you thank you Mia for sharing that's so important and I you you explained it so well that you suddenly realized that's not me and so there's a little distance between a strong sensation and and your sense of self wonderful wonderful work thank you for sharing I see lots of heads bobbing like this and hearts so people relate Wonderful. The next hand was uh, Bill. Go ahead, Bill. Hi, thank you. So I'm uh, feeling really quite neutral today. Uh, I don't know why exactly, but I'm just feeling super neutral. And uh, it's okay. I'm just going to let it be. And I'm just, what I'm doing is I'm waiting for this power to live in me, especially after it mentioned today that I can't think. So, I, so I'm not even trying to think. Usually I'm trying to think of what I'm going to try to say or what I was and I had a point to come up and, and say. But I denied myself of that today. I denied it of everything. I denied it from thinking. So I'm just listening. <laughs> and in that, I have to say I'm in a very neutral state. I would like to be in this neutral state and just feel the overwhelming unconditional divine love flowing through me i mean that's my goal that's my goal my goal is to have that and i'm just waiting for that and i'm in the neutral you need to wait no longer bill we can feel it thank you i don't want to interrupt you but i just had to share that Yes. No, I, I mean, like, I really don't have much more to say. I mean, thank you. Was... Because, you know, the, you, you call it neutral, but that's the receptivity that you're feeling. The receptivity for the inspiration that is always raining down on us, but that we block because we have so many opinions and stories to tell. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to, you know, my brain can't think at all. So all the things that I've been trying to think and, and, for my understanding of the reality that I'm in and then backing it up with my new thoughts and along those lines to in the reality that I'm perceiving, I'm stopping that. I'm stopping. I'm going to st stop and pay attention to my brain. Zero. None. Zero. I'm going to try that. I want to try that. And I know that we can't, I mean, like the internal dialogue goes on. And it's mentioned by the ancient seers that the key is stopping the internal dialogue. If you can do that, you get into the peace of God. The ancient seers said this. Um, 
And so stopping internal dialogues seems like the main goal because that seems to be all my brain is doing is giving me constant internal dialogue. Mm-hmm. Now I mm-hmm. realize it, uh, it told me here, I can't think, told me over there that uh, that's the way to reach God is through silence. And so, hey, let us take this up yeah. a notch. It, and, and, and the Course calls it undoing, the undoing of all the chatter by the ego. Yeah. So yeah, there's, there's, there's a cor- course word for it too. <laughs> but thank you for sharing. It's dialogue. Yeah, thank you. Um, does any before we continue, does anyone like to respond to either uh, Mia or Bill before we pick up on another uh, thread again? Because I'd like to uh, give a little space for that. If I don't see new hands, it's uh, Rich. Your turn. Um. I mean, paragraph two, um, I mean, so the whole thing was read. I just want to, I, I liked what it said there about seven, five, um, you know, let's focus, of, hold, hold on. Let's focus on two first. I am. I am. I'm coming. I'm coming right back there. I was just, okay. All right. I was just br- briefly mentioning a sentence that stood out to me since, since everything was read, I was just going there for a a second but um i mean it's just it's just important like as far as um you know the the strength the strength of mind the strength of mind i mean you know um call it light you know light strength um you know the jesus like person you know their mentality doesn't change and flicker whatsoever it doesn't shift in any way i mean we're talking the culmination of phenomenal Joy, what, what, strength. what was the, what was the sentence in this paragraph seven that you were you wanted to link to paragraph two? Uh, seven five. I said something about the change and flicker. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, it does not change and flicker and go out. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the Jesus mind, the the Buddha mind. There's no changing and flickering whatsoever in terms of um, um, you know, shifting and whatever. Um, I mean, when this book says holy joy is conflict free, phenomenal sense of peace, tranquility, tenderness. Kindness, zero remorse, disappointment, resentment, anger, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's exactly what it's saying, like for real, like a hundred percent of the time. So, you know, paragraph two here. I mean, um, you know, I, I see the the middle part, but um, you know, towards the end there, you know, two, four, you know, so ACM is simply saying, you know, the the it's it's all about understanding. That that's what seeing c s e e i n g seeing means understanding that's what that's what the goal of acim is as far as the whole thing about the body's eyes uh you know uh seeing or not seeing it's about understanding it's about holy relationships every single relationship perfect holy relationship but um you know i mean the power of thought is definitely talked about in this book and it's and it is about the undoing or the transforming of our ego mind into the God mind. In other words, Jesus's mind, for example, was no stronger than any other human's mind. No, it's not about power. It was no more powerful than any other human's mind. It was simply transformed into a pure mind so that Jesus himself could do things like raise Lazarus from the dead and other stuff because he had a pure mind. So it's not, so we all have the same power of mind. It's about transforming that ego nonsense mentality into god mind so um i mean i'm looking here you know the body's brain and um you know and i i heard what was talked about about neutrality definitely thinking about that and the, and the body okay so one of the lessons in the book um the body should my body is a wholly neutral thing holy um, rich if i may interrupt you i would like to stay focused on paragraph two please I am. I'm talking about the body. Yeah, but the paragraph two is about that. The, the it says that the that we think that the eyes can see and that the brain can't think and it can't, and that that's what right. the paragraph is about. I, I would like to talk, and then we can later on we can talk about you know other other stuff that comes up. I, if that's I, okay I have, with you, I have no idea why you would be so frightened about what I'm what I'm saying here. That that's that's a quite the frightened statement you just made. No. Oh, oh. does it come come across as frightened? It, it I'd I'd like to see I, I see it more as focused, but um well, I definitely see it as frightened. But if I'll if I mean we uh, were talking about um the body and the body being neutral and 
there's really no reason why Bill has to jump in here. But anyway, um, I was just saying something about the body being neutral. I mean, that's perfectly applicable to what we're talking about. So, um, you know, the body being neutral. Um, and that, that's, that's the whole idea is that my body is a wholly neutral thing is a lesson in the book, neutral, um, you know, uh, no, uh, marked or positive characteristics. Um, you know, it's like my body is a wholly neutral thing. And so then, you know, the point is, um, my body's eyes can't see in the sense of it's all about understanding, not, not physical seeing. And the same thing for the body, the body can't feel pleasure. The body can't feel pleasure. This is in the book. You know, it yeah. says, um, the Holy Spirit does not demand you sacrifice the hope of the body's pleasure. It has no hope of pleasure. The body cannot feel pleasure. And this Rich, has to be under Rich, you have said that last week and the week before, and I would like to focus on paragraph two, if you don't mind. And I see two, two hands. Uh, yeah, yeah, you said understanding, and that's actually in paragraph two. So that, that's a very useful thought for this, yeah, there's for this absolutely, focus. There's absolutely Absolutely nothing wrong with what I'm saying. I mean, you're just demonstrating phenomenal fear. I mean, there's no yeah. No way to put it. Thank you, thank you for pointing that out, Rich. Well, I'm. I'm I would like to give the. I'd like to give the turn to Uma, if you well, don't that, mind. So that thank Uma you. can tell you a ten minute story about oh, something that yeah. happened. That's Rich, more... your turn is over now. Thank you. But it doesn't make any sense. Uma, you you have the floor. Thank you. Instead, instead of being scared. You know, let me finish. Go ahead, Uma. Oh, hello. Do, I it, want... do what you want to do. Do what you want to do. You're the... Rich, we other. love you. No, 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 We're no. Don't, to... don't start with the I love you nonsense. No, no, either. stop that. That's um, just, that's no, just dumb. That's not nonsense, sweetheart. Now shut that's up just dumb. let me talk about no, me as... No, no, no. That, that, that makes no sense, man. If I you know, talk um, too much for you, then you're just, you know, you're acting let's... Let's you're keep not, have a moment of silence, everybody. Please a have a moment. a moment of silence. Okay, that's enough. I'm going to remove you from the group. Thank okay, you. Okay, goodbye. Go ahead, what, do it. That's what he wanted. Okay, obviously. All right. Um, I hope you, you all know, would. So funny. Yeah, go ahead, Uma, and then we'll have a moment of silence. No. Thank you. Please let me talk. No, yeah, yeah, you can. You can. I came to this. You can you can speak. Go well, ahead. Well, I'm good. Go ahead, Uma. Um, the first time I came, can you hear me? Yes. The first time I came to this noon Zoom, Rich was arguing about individuality, and I didn't know who he was. The next six times, he says these incredible wise things, and now he's back to the first person I met. It's very curious, but we do love him, you know. And we like what he says, but what I wanted to talk about is I am so moved by the fact that there was one God, one truth, one God, you know, one sense of separation, one sadness, as Mia pointed out. This is not my feeling. That is so important for my movement. And and I've been practicing all week from last week, literally seeing light having my eyeballs be beams of light, everything's light. It's so good to have this group. Thank you. But I really like that one. One God, one truth, one ego, one suffering. It's not mine or yours. Is that clear? Yeah, yeah. Albers. Thank you. Thank you, Uma. Um, I really need a couple minutes of silence. I hope you don't mind. So let's, uh, and if you don't need it, please do it for me. Thank you.
Thank you, everybody. Um, before we continue, I see two other facilitators have their hands up. I'd like to give them uh, the floor. Sharon, your hand was first, and then Maggie. Go ahead, okay. Sharon. Um, I just wanted, am I unmuted? Yeah, okay. I just wanted to say that um, as, as far as it seems to me that uh, paragraph two is, is really just pointing out one thing, that we really don't know what's going on. We can't know what's going on while we're walking around in what some people call these meat suits. We have to go to the Holy Spirit to tell us everything because we don't know. Our brain can't think and our eyes can't see. Yeah, it can as far as the body is concerned. And we use those um, abilities in the for the Holy Spirit, or at least that's for me, that's what's important about my brain and my physical eyes so that I can use them for anything the Holy Spirit wants me to do or to see or to know. And that's really all it is, is just to bring us back to that knowledge that we have to turn everything over to the Holy Spirit because we really don't know. We don't know what's best for us or for anyone else. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Maggie, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Johanna. I just thought I would be just very vulnerable and seize the moment that's here because I'm typically very calm and uh, inspired in these meetings. And so my practice uh, isn't often something that I speak about a lot. I mostly just facilitate, but right now I'm feeling a lot. So I thought I'm just going to be honest. And so like my heart is pounding. I'm a little shaky. There's definitely fear going on for me right now. And in my practice, then I like to just notice that this is happening. And there's absolutely the opportunity or the temptation is probably a better word. There's the temptation to tell the story of why this feeling is here right now. And we all just experience something together. So we could say, oh, yes, it's this thing. And this just happened. And we could even go down this road of, oh, Maggie's got a history of trauma and um, conflict can get her going and she gets triggered. And but my practice is to just notice that this feeling is here at this point. And much like Mia was talking about at the beginning of our meeting, it's really only ever about one thing. And anything else that the mind is generating right now in order to make sense of it or try to get away from it or try to soothe or try to explain or anything, right? it's just ego interpretation. And so I really felt like just speaking because it's going on and that's just the truth for me right now. Uh, it is something that I recognize there's nothing for me to do anything about except just notice it. And I think this is really what our, our whole discussions, they're always about. This is what we're talking about. And we try to talk about moments throughout our week where this has perhaps happened and we can share with each other what we do, but it's just happening right now for me. So I thought I'd just be here with you all right now in that. And just acknowledge that as I'm just letting that occur, I'm feeling that shift already right now. And I appreciate those hearts going up on the screen right when I said that too. And so that just feels very... Um, much like beautiful reflections for me there. I love you all. Thank you. Thank you. That's all. Yeah. Thank you, Maggie. I can so relate. Um, Johanna, go ahead. Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Uh, hi. Um, my question is regarding um, the distinction. I sometimes have a problem um, focusing or finding out where the distinction is, for example, between we are not bodies, but there is no body. I totally understand um, that I am not a body, you are not a body, but we all have bodies. And this is a fact we have to, we have to deal with. And um, also the distinction between um, the brain cannot think and 
we uh, in our essence or the human essence cannot think because um, I'm an artist and um, sometimes I marvel about yeah the work of other artists and what beauty they have achieved and um, I think maybe we can say when we are inspired it, it's something greater uh, we are working with uh, for creating art but for me, sometimes it feels a little disappointing to think that there is nothing in the human essence worth striving for. And I think there totally is. For example, when you when you have a craft that you perfect this craft or when you have a relationship that you try to be present and uh, try to get the relationship to the best possible outcome, for example. Yeah, thank me, you. It's, it's, uh, not, yeah, okay. I, I see several hands up. I think people would like to respond already. Yes, uh, Bill's hand was first, but I th I think that was perhaps not relating to Johanna, or was it Bill? Would you mind if I if I went to Andrew and Mia first, and then come back to you? Perfect. All right, Andrew. You, I, I'm assuming yeah. you want to respond to Johanna. Thank you. Yes, I would like to respond to Johanna. Uh, about the body. Uh, God created a spirit. Spirit has mind. The mind is the activating agent of spirit. So what does mind do but think? So earlier I said everything is thought, but I probably should have said when we when we think with God, we create more spirit. But when we think apart from God, we have ideas. The ideas are are made concrete because they're not creative. They're making things. We you either create or you make. Uh, and everything in the world is made. The, the body is is an idea, seemingly made concrete by the by the power of the, the very strong power of our mind. But uh, it, it's a, a, a you could say it's a miscreation. It's not our reality. That's why it's not permanent. And yes, there are things that uh, you can strive for in the world. You know, like it says in the course, every loving thought is retained, and what isn't loving is is given up for nothing. That is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you, so. Andrew. Thank you, Andrew. Um, Mia, you wanted to respond to Johanna? Well, I kind of want to just um, respond to Joanna and Maggie. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Okay. So, pay attention to my language um, and be as non judgmental as possible. This is, a, is an observation. This uh, went, Those words had nothing to do with what you said, Maggie. It has to do with the situation. I just want to say that. So uh, what was experienced is exactly what this course talks about. It's the conflict that happens inside. Um, when the ego attacks, it makes the body uncomfortable because the, the body is the receiving end of the communication is that correct joanna like our um, body is me? the it's the oh joanna our facilitator yeah, yeah. It, <laughs> it, yeah it's it's and, it's and maggie it's it's the it's receiving the communication well the, the body is the means for communication for the holy spirit and, that's the only and, purpose the body has and and so when we perceive any kind of attack, um, it like it's a response, um, and that's why when we hold space for Holy Spirit in these moments, like we did, um, it really makes a difference collectively. And so I would like to thank everyone for for doing that as well, and maybe <clears throat> because. I know how it affects all of us. Um, and the thing about the art, because I get that and in perfecting a craft and some sort of goal and attain, attain 
to attain something. Okay, so we could chase this forever. Leonardo da Vinci did it, and yet everyone is still doing it. And there's all of these examples of where humans have created, we've gone to the moon, oh, but that's not enough, let's go to Mars. Okay, that's not enough, let's go to Pluto. Let's, it's, it's never gonna be enough. And so the whole idea here is that if we use God's strength to just say peace and sustaining peace is, if I'm going to say it, the goal. And if we all focused on that attainment, then that would be it. <laughs> and so this outside world that we keep looking at and making and creating and 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 more and more and more and more and more, we could have the whole buffet. We could eat all of the whole everything. We can make all of it. It would never sustain this idea that the ego seeks. What is it? The 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 ego will keep seeking and not finding. If we focus on the attainment of the peace and being with God, then we will find it. And we have already been guaranteed it and we already have it. The point is not to be seeking on the outside in this human experience. Do not look through our eyes and say, I am thinking and making this. Do not taste with the mouth I am experiencing this pleasure um, and that this is good. Um, it it doesn't it doesn't create anything. We think it creates something. We're making that up. It's it's not um, it's not the thoughts. It's God's thoughts. It's just of peace, and that is satisfying. And when we take that for ourselves as the satisfaction and the only satisfaction, which is what this is saying. If you only have that for one minute every single day and you expand it to two minutes and you expand it to three minutes every day, as your day goes on, you will see that that outside world becomes less appealing. It, it You see the distraction. So that's what I believe that's happening here is what he's saying. Our our eyes are not seeing that it's I'm just not getting it. It's it's the strength is in God and 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 holding that peace and every other thoughts that we are perceiving or receiving from any other source, it's it's not what it is, it's held as the darkness. So I understand Thanks. the whole artist thing. And <laughs> Thank you, Mia. Uh, would you, Johanna, would you like to respond? Yeah, um, I would like to say that I really loved um, what you said and it had such a beautiful energy behind it because I think um, I'm a very temperamental person and um, for me, sometimes it's hard to understand that all my struggle and wanting is not getting me there <laughs> where I, I um, find that peace and that it's enough. <laughs> What you said resonated so much with me that um, we all, we want to achieve something, but then we understand, oh, I have to get another thing. It's not enough. It's not enough. It's never enough. And that there's an endless hole. And um, I, I think it could be that both ways work, but what you say is more important, I would say, because peace is enough as you said and it's it's the goal what you said I, I would agree and um i think we can strive to be better humans or to um to still work for something that we consider uh, worthy um but not have this pain behind that is always driving us, um, but know that we can always return home to where the peace is and where we are enough just as we are. Thank you, Johanna. That was lovely. Thank you. 
Um, there's a couple of hands up and there's one hand up of a person who hasn't spoken yet. And I'd like to give yes. that person the first chance. Mariet. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you. So um, how I see art, this is, is going to be two short answers. How I see art, because I'm an artist as well, and I'm experiencing that when I'm in the moment of absolute peace, it is sort of reflected in my paintings. And those paintings sell very quickly because that's what the mind can understand. The mind recognizes the beauty and not because the painting is so beautiful, but the intention behind it. And that's how we communicate. So the piece is recognized. It's not in the painting, but the painting is used by Holy Spirit as a reflection of the memory. So that's how my art has been used. And the other thing that I wanted to say, because I was very happy that uh, Maggie spoke the words that she did. And uh, so I want to take it like, I'm extremely practical. Those who know me, I'm extremely practical. So I really wanted to just extend a little more on the practicality. And uh, I was really looking for this one quote uh, from the course. And it says, if you point out the errors of your brother's ego, you must be seeing through yours because the Holy Spirit does not perceive his errors. So that's, I mean, just to say that it sounds very easy, but that's the whole difficulty to recognize that we're not a body, we're a mind. So just to put it into practicality, what just is still in my mind, what just happened, I first go to like feeling the feelings, but then I think, oh, wait a second, that wasn't rich, that wasn't a body that wasn't someone out there, that was the choice for attack in the mind, you know, the one mind that Uma said so beautifully, I love it, one God, one ego, one that, so it's just one, and it really helped me with the silence, how quickly we can actually forgive the moment we recognize that it's not out there, that it's not a body doing it. It's the mind that is still fearful of love. And then it becomes so gentle because Holy Spirit is so eager to answer that call for love. And all we have to do is be willing to take that small step back. And it sounds very easy, but in my experience of a whole lot of years, it's not because, you know, the mind that does believe in the dream is terrified so we have to take all the steps through the terror we don't have to suffer through it but we have to go through it we cannot bypass it in any way because then you're just woo woo wah wah skipping all over the true practice so um yeah i just wanted to add that part where it's not anybody outside doing this to us it's really the choice for the mind that believed in attack if my mind was so clear that i knew that there was no one outside of me i would not have experienced the fear and i would have seen it as a call for love because my mind would be clear enough and it it wasn't and there's no problem that it wasn't because that was the beautiful opportunity so my brother now becomes a gift instead of an attack or an uh, an enemy so i just wanted to add that thank you Thank you, Margriet. Um, there's one more minute left. And I, I would like, what, what I, I would I just, like to I suggest. Just want to say, can we all send hearts to Rich? If we could all just send Rich hearts, because he is. Good idea. He is dear to me. And I just thought we should do that. Send him hearts. I love you, Rich. <laughs> That's that's not the, you know the, not loving him is not the point though, or loving him I mean that's not that's not the no, issue I, but anyway I know, yeah. I know. yeah anyway um, what I would like to do is end this meeting with a prayer and then for those of us who'd like to stay on a little longer after recording has stopped we'll just have a, a couple more minutes. Um, 
So, mm, the following is from lesson 75, slightly adjusted for today's meeting. The light has come. The light has come and we are healed and you can heal. The light has come. We are saved and we can save. We are at peace and we bring peace with us wherever we go. Darkness and turmoil and death have disappeared. The light has come. Amen. Um...